Do you know who Drew Afuelo is? I'm hilarious. Maybe you can't relate. <laughs> I do not. I've never heard of this person before in my life, but producer Jacob, being 12 years old, a very hip, cool, young Zoomer, he insists that I bear the pain of watching some Drew Afuelo TikTok videos. Drew Afuelo is allegedly an influencer and podcaster with almost 8 million followers on TikTok. She primarily makes content roasting men. Sure she does. Who she believes have views that are misogynistic, fat phobic, and trans phobic. And producer Jacob, I don't know, I guess he hates me. I guess he thinks that I roast him too much, so he's gonna make me endure this. This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More from ExpressVPN in a moment. For now though, let's get started with Ms. Ofwalo. Wait, come in and make this sad. Now, I'm no teacher, but I'm pretty sure the definition of that is a uh, whore. <laughs> God. Good one. <laughs> You're right. You are definitely not a teacher, but you could be a lima bean. <laughs> Why is your f***ing head shaped like that? Jesus. You got a lot on your mind or what? <laughs> the men who say this don't even crest 80k a year. What are you worried about, b***h? <laughs> and even if she was a hoe, she's not your hoe. What are you worried about? <laughs> the dudes who say this are always f***ing broke and complaining about women after their fictional money. Sounds like you're hating from outside the club, <laughs> Also a nose ring at your fossil age? Okay. <laughs> also, you look like the main baby from Coco Melon. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> look, I drew a beard too. <laughs> bye. I, I get why she's popular. I get, it's the laugh. It's all the laugh. <laughs> it might be a genuine laugh, or it's at least a shtick that is pretty funny. And it's so many layers, right? It's a video reacted to in a video, reacted to in a video, reacted to in a video. None of which conveyed any real information, but taken together, it's like hyper reality, you know, taken together. It's so condensed. It's so dense, every single image. Such a pure grade A concentrative commentary that it's it's kind of amusing. I get it. They say like, oh, men, men are meant to protect. Protect from what? Because we're not cavemen anymore, so you're not fighting saber tooth yeah. tigers. Protect from what? And then it's like, and y'all are y'all aren't y'all aren't useful when it's other men accosting us. That's either. why I said protect from what other men. Yeah, turns out you're the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. But then even when you do see like something happening, you don't do anything. Yeah, I've seen several videos of women getting like abused or assaulted like in public, and men are just standing around like you usually do, recording doing, it. Yeah, not doing sh and doing nothing else. But why would I step into an altercation that has nothing to do with me? Because <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you have a moral compass. Yeah, they don't like women well, getting knocked out. Well, you said provide and protect. protect they've almost got a point there they like don't have a point and then they kind of have a point but then they lose their point again they don't have a point in that men are the stronger sex and women need to be protected and if men were not there to protect women uh, through law enforcement and through family uh, then women would be quite vulnerable to uh, predation yes i I thought that was obvious. It's just a fact of human nature. And then she says, well, men are the root of all evil because you're protecting women from other men, but you're also protecting women from other women because man is one species, and men and women are the two sexes of the species, but man refers to both sexes. So you'd say in the beginning, God created man, both male and female created he them. So I get maybe they're a little confused by that, by language. Uh, but she says, well, men are the root of all evil. That's, that's not true, but it's true that human nature has fallen, but human nature has fallen for both men and women, as I think they would demonstrate. But then, then she says, well, sometimes men just stand around and they don't protect women. Sometimes men just stand around and they'll film, or you know, even if a woman's being attacked. And, and sometimes that is true. Part of that is a political problem, though, because sometimes men do intervene. So, for instance, when a crazy career criminal with a rap sheet a mile long comes onto a subway and tells people, including women, I'm going to kill you. I don't care if I die. I'm going to kill you. And then a man, a Marine, stands up and takes that threat out. Well, that man is going to go to prison. That man is going to be brought up on homicide charges. And many of the liberal women who are here complaining about how the men don't ever stand up and defend them, they're going to be the ones to cry racism and call the man a murderer and say he shouldn't have stood up and done anything. So there's a political problem here, which is that the political order incentivizes men not to act, not to protect people. So that, that's true. It's a little bit damned if you do, damned if you don't. 
aspect here. Right now, go to expressvpn.com slash MichaelYT. It is extremely important to protect your online privacy with a VPN. Choosing a VPN that you trust equally important. I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. Here is why. Number one, ExpressVPN doesn't log your online activity. They've even developed a trusted server technology that makes it impossible for their servers to store any data at all. Two, speed. ExpressVPN does not slow down your user experience. You can even stream HD videos with zero buffering. Number three, ExpressVPN is incredibly easy to use. Just fire up the app and tap one button to connect. It's not just me saying this. Business Insider, The Verge, many other tech journals. Great ExpressVPN, the number one VPN in the world. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust. Use my link expressvpn.com slash MichaelYT today. Get three months free on a one-year package. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash MichaelYT. Letter Y, letter T. ExpressVPN.com slash MichaelYT. Head on over there today. Men who complain about gold diggers, they have no gold. <laughs> they have no money. What are you worried about? You're worried about other men's money? That's crazy. Yeah, Stack they're... your own bread before you worry about somebody else's. I can't tell you how many <laughs> how many men I've stitched that are like, see, this is why you got to worry about these gold. What? Uh, show me a W-2. I want to see how much money you made last year. <laughs> and I'll tell you if you should be worried about gold diggers. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I promise you're okay. You're safe. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Women like that only date like... It's high echelon men, like top tier, like money you would never even be, you can't even think of the number. You can't even imagine the number. And like women only date men like that. So they're not looking at you working at Jiffy Lube. Like I promise you're good. I promise you're safe. <laughs> it's a kind of funny observation. It's just not true. Women who don't have class or dignity occasionally are able to nab a billionaire, but usually cannot. And so those kinds of women will prey on men who are not billionaires. So you're basically saying that you're just dating me because I can buy you things. Yes. If you are Jeff Bezos, you could date a gold digger, it doesn't matter. Paul McCartney could date a gold digger and marry a gold digger, it doesn't really matter. These guys have, practically speaking, limitless wealth. But if you're a regular guy who doesn't have a ton of money, this woman's still gonna make fun of that guy. So you don't have any money. Her point's kind of funny and she's making fun of these guys and it's cruel humor. But from the operation of how a gold digger actually works, that it's just, it, it just isn't true. Why don't women like short men, right? Okay, one side of it could be beauty standards. Who made those? Other men, okay? Other men are the ones who have said you have to be tall to be considered manly. That's because of y'all. That's one. Two. Let me put a pause right there. See, what, what she does that's incoherent is she says, I am independent-minded. I'm, I'm smarter than all of you people. You need to listen to me. I see things correctly. I'm an empowered woman. I set the rules. I do whatever I want. But also, men have all the control, and they're the only people with agency, and women can't do anything. Do you see the conflict there? Do you see that problem? Which is not just her problem. It's an incoherence at the heart of feminism. Women have absolutely no control or agency to set beauty standards, to, to do anything at all. And also, women have all the agency and independence in the world and they don't need a man and a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. I'm a woman, hear me roar. A lot of times, short men are horrible. Oh, totally. Why? Because they have what's called the Napoleon complex. Look it up if you don't know it. It's a, sh a short man syndrome. <laughs> That's Ooh, literally a, a psychological thing Ooh. that they have because their toxic masculinity has entrenched them in this totally. hatred towards themselves. Totally. So they act out. And a lot of times they're extremely misogynistic or bigoted in general, or they're just downright <laughs> terrible. But she has a decent point here. Just short guys can be awful. That's true. Uh, she's going obviously too far in the, that direction. She's saying short men, because they're short, are have all these sort of psychopathologies, and therefore they're really terrible. And that's not true. But I don't know, short guys can be just as bad as tall guys. Or just like fat women can be just as bad as skinny women. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. You can be awful in any condition that you're in, and you can also be sanctified in any, any condition that you're in. Some of the greatest men of history have been pretty short. Some of the greatest men in history have been pretty tall. Does that, does that mean that every man over six feet is not awful? No, Definitely not, not even a little, Definitely not. not even a little bit. <laughs> but a lot of times if women are like, okay, well, if I'm going to, if they're all bad, if they're all trash, I want to date a tall piece of trash. Like if you're all going to be horrible, at least be tall. <laughs> My whole thing is if they're all horrible. Well, hold up, <laughs> pause there. So hold on, you're proving the point because you're saying that you are more attracted to tall men. 
So unless you're just saying, I've been brainwashed by the men who set the beauty standards, then you're saying, no, we do, we prefer tall men. And so I hate all men, but I find tall men hotter, so I'm going to go, if I have to be with a horrible man, I'm going to be with a tall man. You're, you're undercutting the first part of your argument. I, how is it that we've gotten to a point where, like, romanticizing obesity is okay? <laughs> What do you think it's like? Like genuinely, what do you think it's like to exist in a world where fat people are like your biggest stressor? <laughs> like you're not a fat person, but your mind is so consumed by their existence. The earth is like literally on fire. Minorities are losing rights like every day. People are being murdered in the street and you moved that billboard to the top of your priority list. Get a job. <laughs> Have you ever thought about like when you see something you don't like, you do this? <laughs> Mind your business. We have like real problems to address. This isn't one of them. Bye. <laughs> the laugh is very funny. The laugh is very funny. And it, the irony, of course, to this commentary is that she's saying, this, this woman, this fat person is in your mind. If fat people are occupying your mind and causing you to focus on them a lot and resent them, then you're a complete loser. But of course, she is guilty of that with regard to white people. Because their next sentence, she goes, minorities are having their rights taken away by the evil white man and the white people are terrible. So she's just, she's just focusing and obsessing over white people. Or men, too, is, is the other the other disfavored group by her. So it's, it's ironic, and she's probably probably not aware of that. She's definitely aware of the laugh, though, and she's aware that the, the laugh is genuinely funny. I didn't. I got a kick out of it. I got a look. Credit where credit's due. I, thought, I, was, I got a kick out of her. Do y'all want to hear something I find absolutely hilarious? No! 